The Unified Rules of MMA just had some major rule changes that were approved by the Association of Boxing Commissions for MMA fights. These new rules should really help fighters who get fouled or poked in the eye during a match, so let's get into the details. The new rules for cut men. The first big change is that cut men can now treat cuts caused by fouls or accidental headbutts during the round. Before, fighters had to make it to the end of the round before their cut men could come in and help stop the bleeding. This disadvantaged the fighter who got cut by a foul. Now, the ref can call a timeout and the cut man can come in and work on stopping the cut right away. This gives the fouled fighter a better chance of being able to continue fighting. It's a simple yet very impactful change to help fighters who are fouled. We have all seen a fighter lose a fight by stoppage after they were illegally struck by a headbutt or another illegal strike and not given the chance to recover. This should do a lot in rectifying some of these issues. The second change is around how eye pokes are handled. In the past, when a fighter got poked in the eye, the doctor would come in right away and shine a light, asking if they could see. Often the fighter couldn't clearly see yet, and the fight would get called off prematurely. Under the new rules, the fighter gets up to five minutes to recover. They can be given a cold compress for their eye while the doctor waits for between 60 and 90 seconds. Only after this recovery time will the doctor be allowed to come in and check their vision. This allows the fighter's eye more time to bounce back after making the call on whether they can continue or not. The third and final rule change is a bit of a controversial one. This rule change clarifies the discretion in which referees have to stand up stalling fighters. The rule roughly states that the referee will stand up or break the fighters up when neither are able to demonstrate real, significant, or sustained effort to advance towards finishing the fight by any method. Simply maintaining what may be perceived as a superior position will not be considered effort to advance towards finishing the fight, nor grounds for a guaranteed opportunity to maintain that position. The commission claims that this rule was proposed because they have seen an inconsistent application of when referees use stand-ups to break up fighters in the cage. Their second reason is that fighters are using positional dominance to coast to victory, or as they say it, passivity in the pursuit of victory to simply maintain a position without any significant attempt to finish the fight. But they do not define what a significant attempt to finish a fight is here. In their opinion, if a fighter advances to a dominant position, but does not make a significant attempt to finish the fight, they are in essence trying to win by avoiding losing. They feel that a fighter that is not making a significant attempt to finish the fight is not fulfilling the terms of their agreement with the promoter and their obligation to the fans who pay to watch a competition. While changes to a sport in the aim to make it more exciting for fans and viewers can be a very good thing when done thoughtfully and carefully, using language that implies fighters have an obligation to be exciting for the promoter and the fans because they paid to watch them can be very dangerous and could harm the sport long-term in the essence of competition. While clarifying the discretion a referee has in an MMA fight is good, this opens up a huge can of worms on what a significant attempt to finish the fight is. On top of that, this seems extremely targeted at grappling, which is already quite nerfed in MMA as it is, and adding this ambiguous discretion doesn't account for people who stall when striking, backpedal, bicycle, etc. With further clarification, this rule could end up being a good thing, but for right now, it is up for debate. During the meeting, the ABC also discussed how referees could separate and reset fighters after a foul, but that has been tabled for the next meeting. A quick summary of that proposed rule is that a fighter should not gain an advantage by fouling their opponent, and a fighter shouldn't be disadvantaged by their opponent fouling them. Adding clarification here could be a really good thing and hopefully is discussed more formally at the next meeting. Let us know what you think of the new rule changes, which is your favorite, and what you especially think of the third rule change.